Hey, what's up soundbar people that keep an open mind about headphones? Daniel here from Never Enough Tech. Just a quick one for you and the last video I'll cut in Austin before heading back up north where my sparkle trees live. I'm a bone conducting headphones fan. Now you know. Let me break this down. That is, I have a soft spot for headphones that instead of blasting sound directly into your ear via a cup or earbud, vibrate bones around your ear opening, bypassing the eardrum and relaying signals directly to the inner ear. You know the bone conducting mechanism is working if you put fingers in your ear, not too deep, eardrums and all that, and the audio gets louder, which is why aftershocks often includes earplugs. So I'd argue there is a very clear winner in the activity-oriented bone conducting headphone consumer space. The Aeropex by Aftershocks. As with previous Aftershocks bone conducting products, they don't penetrate or cover your ears, BFD, so more comfortable, less swelling and soreness in the ear. They are light, sleek, durable, water and sweat resistant. They hang fine around your neck and I think it has the best audio in its class. You really need to try competing bone conducting products to get a sense of how refined the Aeropex feel and sound is. The Aeropexes are not crazy expensive, $160, not in the four to $500 range that many flagship Bluetooth headphones sit, but more than its competitors, that's for sure. They are definitely not the most cool looking headphones, but not bad. Anyway, there is a niche Aftershocks wants to address that is not well served by the Aeropex or any other bone conducting headphone models in their lineup. So who is this mystery person? The customer on the phone or in virtual meetings all day who need to wear a headset. It's no secret that 2020 dramatically increased the volume of this particular activity. The thing is, some folks, and putting myself in this group, don't want headphones in or over their ears all day. I get swamp ears, headaches, soreness, and swelling. It's a hot mess. Mess. You're a hot mess. You're so I would really like to wear something like the Aeropex in that I'm on the phone four to five hours a day. Unfortunately, the Aeropex stink at phone calls. So many complaints. Dan, we can't hear you. Can you talk more into the mic? Don't take conference calls with the Aeropex. Okay, so this is where the OpenCom comes in. Slap a mic arm on the Aeropex and give it the same price, $160, problem solved. Is the OpenCom really just the Aeropex with a mic arm slapped on? Well, largely, but not quite. Let's explore. In the box, the OpenCom introduces a completely different hard shell case meant to protect the boom mic, I assume. You'll find a mesh sleeve for some extra storage. Also included, a single magnetic charging wire, same as the Aeropex, and your registration card. Design and build. No doubt these two models are physically similar. Both use the titanium band with the same housing material, kind of a rubbery feel. They're very similar in size, but the OpenCom is a smudge bulkier, even without the boom mic. Altogether, the OpenCom is 27% heavier at 33 grams, while the Aeropex sits at just 26 grams. The OpenCom is just more headphone in general. With the OpenCom, you get slightly wider bone conductors. The humps are bigger on the OpenCom. Even the band is a little bit bulkier. The boom mic, the biggest difference by far, feels and acts like rubber. You can bend it, but it goes back to its regular position. It's not meant to be shaped by the customer, though it does seem well positioned to take a punch from your toddler. The mic can rotate from the side of your head to get it out of the way to the side of your mouth. Well, it's not really long enough to be in the side of your mouth, more like the side of your cheek or jaw, you are not talking directly into this mic as you might want with more traditional headsets with mic arms. Just saying, would have been nice if they gave the option to mute the mic when it's folded up down. They forgot to get my advice before making this product. Common mistake. You'll notice very quickly that the buttons, instead of playing hide and seek by being small and the same color as the band, went all look at me with a round orange shape with a wider surface area. They also stick out more and are easier to find with your fingertips. And you'll find a lot more space between the volume down and up. It's much more satisfying to press these buttons. The magnetic charging port gives both of these models a higher water dust resistance rating than previous generations with micro USB chargers. The OpenCom gets an IP55 and the Aeropex is an IP67 rating. I assume the mic arm is the weak link here. So the OpenCom can take a splash and the Aeropex can take a dunk. The OpenCom comes in this one corporate friendly color where the Aeropex has gotten a little more playful in the last few months. Fit and comfort, the OpenCom headband is not quite as rigid as the Aeropex and has a slightly more relaxed fit. And as I mentioned, the surface area on the conductors are a bit wider, so this also serves to diffuse pressure. The OpenCom is for sitting around indoors. The Aeropex is for rigorous outdoor exercise. It makes sense the OpenCom is a little more comfortable. 
Though, quite honestly, both are fine for exercise. You would just look a little bit like a donkey hole exercising hard with the OpenCom. Maybe though, if you need some fresh air, take the OpenCom out for a walk and talk. It works great. Battery and charging. The OpenCom increased battery size and capacity. This is what really explains the bigger humps. Aftershox is claiming a five minute charge gives you about two hours of talk time. And you get 16 hours of total talk time. The manual says eight hours of continuous playback, which is the same advertised duration as the Aeropex. You would hope playback would also increase given a bigger battery. Doesn't make sense why it wouldn't, but let's just go with it. Time to full charge was cut in half with OpenCom to one hour from two with the Aeropex. So I've been using OpenCom for about a month. They seem to last me two days easy with moderate to heavy use. No complaints about battery life. <laughs> so this is kind of a random goodie. I have found one thing I like about the OpenCom that is a serious improvement over the Aeropex. When you choose to play audio through your phone speakers and OpenCom is laying around in standby or whatever, not off, OpenCom does not aggressively take over your audio. So many times I would get home from working out with the Aeropex, take a load off and watch some YouTube or something, and the Aeropex would just commit highway robbery on my audio. My sound would now exist in the kitchen nook, serenading my keys. Settings. The settings options are the same between Aeropex and OpenCom. I won't run through all of them, but here are all the things you can do with the three buttons. Pause if needed. Okay, sound quality. Very similar, but not the same, and it's purposeful. The Aeropex is designed primarily for music and incorporates Premium Pitch 2 Plus, which improves the stereo effect and provides a clear bass response at higher volumes, providing an overall fuller sound. Friendly reminder, bone conducting headphones are not known for strong bass. The OpenCom, after some talks with tech support, does not support Premium Pitch. Aftershock seems to have shaped the sound to be brighter, making it easier to discern speech. Honestly, OpenCom headphones are clearly for listening to voice. Outside of their explicit purpose, I would lean towards audiobooks and podcasts rather than music. If you need a headset that just delivers music spectacularly, this is not the headset for you. If you only listen to music casually from time to time, the OpenCom still makes sense. The EQ adjustments are the same between the two. The EQ setting toggles between open ear and earplug mode, supposedly. Earplug mode seems to significantly reduce sound fullness. Okay, I've stalled long enough, the mic quality. As with the Aeropex, you have microphone noise canceling. The OpenCom's noise canceling is more effective utilizing a digital signal processor that further reduces white noise, making your voice cleaner for your meeting buddies. Let's not get confused. All noise canceling is for the mic, not for your audio. So I've been reliably informed that pretty much the whole rationale for open ear headsets is to let sound in, not noise cancel which makes sense when weaving in and out of traffic on your bike. But if noise canceling is possible to some degree, that would be a really sweet mode. I got into bone conducting for comfort, not to let more sound in. If there is a way to cancel noise via bone conducting technology, not 100% clear on how possible it is, probably need more bone conductors or something, the OpenCom would be the kind of headset to try it on where there's not much of a case for letting the outside world in. Okay, mic test. First, the Aeropex. Let's level set. This is a test of the Aftershocks Aeropex. This is a test of the Aftershocks Aeropex. Now the OpenCom. This is a test of the Aftershocks OpenCom. This is a test of the Aftershocks OpenCom. And for good measure, the speakerphone, about 18 inches away from my face on the table. This is a test of the iPhone 12 Pro Max. This is a test of the iPhone 12 Pro Max. When recording outside is your best solution, you are in a bad spot. Huge difference between the Aeropex and OpenCom. Much cleaner, much crisper. Kinda wish the OpenCom sounded a bit more on par with the speakerphone, but it's not surprising in that phones, in particular the iPhone 12 Pro Max, has some truly sophisticated hardware and amazing processing power. Some closing thoughts. I actually bought these with no intention of reviewing them. Where I have more than enough sound bars, I really needed a headset I could stand to wear as holding speakerphone meetings all day was not gonna make me popular in my new temporary living arrangement. The OpenCom is exactly what I wanted it to be. Comfortable, easy to use, long lasting, and capable at making my voice discernible in virtual meetings. All that complaining about my voice clarity I receive consistently with the Aeropex disappeared. I buy a lot of headphones. Don't ask me to justify. Nonetheless, it is very uncommon for anyone's set to get used on a daily basis. This set gets that status. If you're looking to use the OpenCom consistently in a crowded or loud room, 
I would suggest a more traditional product that blocks your ears. Otherwise, I gleefully endorse this product. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this up. If you're a home audio person, thanks for sticking around. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Hope you come back. Catch you on the next one.